Hey Destiny, this is Cami, your worship leader, and I seriously miss worshiping with you guys each Sunday morning. Um, probably one of the worst things happening from this whole quarantine situation. Um, but I wanted to share with you some encouragement, some things that God put on my heart this week. And we're going to go back to the Old Testament. And after wandering for 40 years in the desert, the Israelites had finally made it to the promised land, but it was not theirs yet. There were other people already living there, and some of them were even giants. The prospect of overtaking them was so overwhelming that 10 out of 12 spies decided it would be better to stay wandering in the desert rather than defeating them. So basically, they focused on the problem and not their God. Sound familiar? The God who had fed them with manna every single day, the God who had parted the Red Sea so they could escape from Pharaoh's armies, and parted the Jordan River so they could cross it. The feats of God were so well known in the area that even Rahab the harlot, a prostitute in Jericho, had heard of them and believed. Spoiler alert, her faith would lead to Christ literally because she was King David's great-great-grandmother. So what does that have to do with us? Here we are in 2020, locked in our homes and far from the Holy Land. Some of us have toilet paper and some do not, but what we all have is a promise. The Israelites taking possession of the promised land is a physical representation of the spiritual battle that God is fighting for us. All these kings in their land that Joshua took at one time because the Lord God of Israel fought for Israel. Joshua 10.42 In this verse we see that even though Joshua thought he was taking the land, it was actually God that had won that fight for him. And later in Joshua, Joshua 11, 5, 6, we see, So they went out, they and all their armies with them, as many people as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude, with very many horses and chariots. And when all these kings had met together, they came and camped together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. But the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid because of them, for tomorrow about this time I will deliver all of them slain before Israel. That was 31 kings. Um, and God had promised that by tomorrow at that time they would not be an issue anymore. So even though we aren't battling kings and armies, we are battling other things. Unemployment, sickness, lack of freedom, great uncertainty, so much togetherness with our So now more than ever, we have to look to the one who already has the victory. Don't let fear paralyze you. Don't give away your joy. Look for the manna that God is sending you every day. There are blessings all around you, but when we focus on the problem, we miss them. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Turn off the news and turn on some praise and worship music like Goodness of God by Bethel Music, that's my current jam on repeat, or Surrounded by Upper Room, which we did the last time we met. Um, and hang in there, Destiny. We'll be together soon.